Sustainability in fashion has been debated for decades. Moreover, today, where the customer is more demanding and careful on where and how the sourcing of materials of the materials is made by a brand. Nevertheless, it's common knowledge that the use of fur in fashion has partially contributed of, at the extinction of some animals such as polar bears or ermine. In this regard, the WWF 22 Living Planet report states that there is an average decline of 69% in species populations since 1970 and that in 50 years planet Earth has lost a circa 32,000 animal species. The case story I will narrate in this video is based on the importance of sourcing materials for a brand and how this might affect not only the acquisition of new customers but also the damage in terms of image that the brand might get because there is a misleading representation before the customer's eyes. The plot of the case, which was filed at the New York co City Court on the 22nd of February 2021, is very simple. In November 2017, Plaintiff Lee, a citizen of Curtis, California, purchased a black Canada goose Chateau Parker with coyote fur trim from a store located in Washington, D.C. At the time of the purchase, Plaintiff resided in Maryland. Plaintiff alleges alleges that when the, he purchased the jacket, he relied on Canada Goose's representation that the fur of the jacket was sourced using ethical and human trapping methods. In particular, the plaintiff alleges that the use of the words ethical and sustainable reported in Canada Goose advertising and website mislead customers regarding its trapping methods used by the brand uh, in sourcing the fur. To be more precise, the allegations are based on a paper hang tang attached to the products, which contains the following uh, um, statements. Ca the Canada Goose Fur Transparency Standards, TM, is committed to support the ethical, responsible and sustainable sourcing of and use of real fur. Second, the first traceability program to cover the wild habitat. It ensures uh, that all the fur sourced by Canada Goose is in accordance with the Agreement of International Human Trapping Standards, also known as AIHTS in Canada, and the best managed practice, practices, also BPM, in the United States is fully traceable throughout the supply chain. And the third statement of by Canada goes, the standard certifies that we never purchase from fur from farms, uh, fur farms never use fur from endangered animals, and only purchase fur from li licensed North American trappers, strictly regulated by state, provincial and federal standards. Through these statements, Mr. Lee reports that he has been misleading and he was sure that the compliance and regulations adopted by Canada Goose were true, while in reality they were not. Canada Goose responded to the plaintiff's claims by stating the following declarations. Canada Goose moved to dismiss the plaintiff's claims, arguing essentially that it, its statements were true truthful and the plaintiff's subjective views about fur trapping standards do not make the company's statements false or misleading. Concerning the plaintiff's claims about the use of, of agreement of international human trapping standards in Canada and BPM within the US, the brand states that his uh, statements regarding the compliance of with uh, the agreement of international human trapping standards and BPM standards are and sourcing from licensed food trappers regulated by state, provincial and federal standards because these statements are accurate and therefore unlikely to be misled. The last point, uh, Canada Goose didn't expressly mention the US uh, uh, state thus allowing the concept of North America also to include Canada itself.
of the requirements made by Mr. Lee, the court granted one and dismissed the other two. The granted claim is the one concerning the misleading information reported by the artwork brand. In fact, when assessing whether an, adver an advertising claim is false or, or misleading, in the District of Columbia, the claim is viewed from the perspective of, of the reasonable, uh, reasonable customer. In order to establish a false advertising claim, the plaintiff must prove that the marketer has made a material misrepresentation or omission that has a tendency to the mislead. The court, in fact, stated that uh, through the allegations of fame, viewing the complaints in light of the most favorable to the plaintiff, the court find, finds that the allegations support the reasonable interference that Canaragua's purported commitment, committed commitment to ethical force housing is misleading because Canaragua's obtained support from trappers who use allegedly inhumane leg hold traps and snails. The other two complaints are those who have been dismissed. The first one, of, uh, as the court states, uh, is about the use of, by Canaragos of the regulations uh, stated in the Agreement of International Human Trapping Standards and BPN. In fact, the court states that the plaintiffs hadn't argued here that Canaragos wasn't complying with those standards. Rather, the plaintiff has argued that the standards themselves weren't sufficient to prevent inhuman force losing practices. The court then wrote that the relevant standards may not, nonetheless be inhuman or inadequate, does not render the defendant's representation as to compliance force false or misleading. Lastly, concerning the standards adopted by the animal trappers, the court has stated that defendant represents that it source, sources from North American trappers strictly regulated by state, provincial and federal standards. Indeed, the word federal could refer to federal laws in Canada. Thus, the non-existence of U.S. federal standards does not render their statements false or misleading. Also, if the case at the end has been closed through the signature of both parties of an NDMA, these are the lessons we have learned. Firstly, if you advertise that you are complying with voluntary standards, then even through your compliance with those standards, if it's voluntary, you can be held liable for false advertising if you don't actually comply with them. Secondly, don't assume that general statements that you make about your company's business practices are puffery. When these statements are viewed in the context and in the con consumer perspective, they may be understood to communicate specific claims about how the company operates. So be careful.